I wanna give you five hacks that I use when editing music to videos within Premiere Pro. For this first tip, I wanna show you that whenever I'm placing a transition between two clips, and that transition happens to fall on a beat, what I try and do is place it one frame before the beat. So what I wanna show you next is a group of clips cut to the music how I would normally edit it. All of the transitions will happen one frame before the beat. So now let me show you the other version of this edit where I place all of the edits directly on the beat and hopefully you can feel the difference as a viewer. So personally, I think the version that you just viewed feels a little delayed to me as a viewer and as an editor. I much prefer the look aesthetically of putting the transition one frame before the beat like this. If you find yourself editing to the beat of the music and you've never tried this before, hey, try it out and see if you like it. If not, you can always just switch back to editing on the beat. But I'm really curious in the comments, what do you do as an editor when it comes to placing your edits to the beat of the music? For the next tip, locking off your music tracks. Let's say I want to ripple delete a couple parts out of this project and I don't lock off my music track. I'm left with a bunch of edits on my music that I don't want. What would be easier is to lock off the music tracks, create my edits, and adjust the music afterwards, if that makes sense. Obviously, if you have a specific section of music perfectly timed to the cuts, then you'll need to work around that. And speaking of working around sections of music, the third tip is to stagger your music tracks. Here we have a sub four minute video, and within that video, I have four separate pieces of music for the different sections. Let's say I wanted to do some edits to this first section. I'll lock off that music. I can ripple delete that and everything shifts down while this music stays the same. Now, obviously there is an overlap here, but it's easy for me to go in and adjust that afterwards. If all of this music was on the same track and I locked it off like this, and I went in and did that same ripple delete. Now everything's shifting over and we've messed up the sync between our music stems and everything that I've edited. Where this also comes in handy is moving around sections of your edit. So if you're using something like the track select forward tool, now I can track select forward and let's say I wanted to maybe move this whole section. Maybe I add more music in for this because I needed to switch something up or maybe you need to select all of this material, move it to maybe the end of the video and now you can track select forward bring all of this music and material in and then adjust your music accordingly using this technique of organizing your sessions like this is definitely a personal preference you could try it out if you like it awesome if not you're not gonna hurt my feelings unless you aren't subscribed to the channel and you've been watching for a while I'm almost to 100k subscribers. I would love to hit that mark soon. So do with that information what you must. Next tip, trying to end your music cuts with the actual ending of the song instead of an audio fade, if it's possible. Here's the cut with a normal audio fade. But what I think sounds so much better is if we use the actual ending of the song, which is a nice, That definitely signals to me that it's a ending of whatever I'm creating. Let me highlight right here, hit Command K to make an edit, and then I'm just gonna zoom out and listen to where I want this to play. Bam! So right here at this beat is where I want this to happen. Hit Command K again right there on the track, and then I'm going to ripple delete that so it brings this little section over, and let's see what we get. <laughs> it's better. We could even uh, shorten that a little bit. Maybe I will ripple delete that bit and hit shift command D to add a crossfade in there. And now we get something like this. Again, if I want to shorten this even more, I'll highlight this, hit W to ripple delete from the ending to right there. And I'll double click my set duration and maybe make it 1.2. And now we have this fade and then a fade out. <laughs> it's 
So one thing I am noticing is the beat right here may be a little off. So one thing that I wanna show you is if you want to line things up to the most precision that you can, you wanna show audio time units. So I'm going to hold Option or Alt on Windows and hit the down key so that moves this down one. And then I'm gonna take the music on top and extend this out. You can see this beat right here is actually supposed to happen when this beat happens right here. So I'm going to highlight these two and move it over one. We're about lined up, but if you wanted to really, really get in there and match it perfectly, what you can do is go up to your little hamburger menu and go to show audio time units. So now instead of looking at frames on the time code, now we're looking at audio time units. So now if I zoom in, I can really see if these match up or not. It looks like I could move this over just a smidge to have it match up. Now I'm going to hold option, hit the up key to move that back into place. And what I might do is actually extend this over to see if I can maybe hit this beat right here. I'll add the crossfade in. I'll go back up to my hamburger menu and undo show audio time units. And now we have Man, that is so cool. If this video was helpful, don't forget to leave me a thumbs up. There are a plethora of other music editing hacks within Premiere Pro that I've already covered on this channel and would take way too long to describe in this single video. So if you wanna check them out, I made a playlist. You can click on it now. Until next time, my name's Javier Mercedes. Hope you're out there living a life of abundance. Bye.